prediction? Yes, prediction. Pain. Super 16 is the cream of the crop. College football time of year don't stop. We're We're adding this guy. Just another go down with the courage. Off skill and will. Bringing you the best 16. Serving up a plate for the football fiends. Breaking the best 16 college teams. Football fans, it's the show with the dream. Ain't no bias. Chris Zorris breaking truth. Traded in the golden helmet in the past for a suit. With the tape, never lie. College ball, he's a stoop. Breaking the top 16, not the top 32. I don't mean to cut you off like a Zorvis jersey, but you ain't really grinding unless the jersey dirty. Hit the running back like a Mack truck behind the 30 yard line. It's game time. I see Roddy off the side. You look line. at Chris like this with a fact checklist. Going over college teams like a big scientist. Steve streaking from his head like in his playing days. Super 16 poles on the show straight away. It's the FBS, the best of the best from the ACC to the SEC. Pac 12, Big 10, Mount West, Sun Belt, and the Big 12. Open your eyelids. Who the best like the clock. Super 16 is the cream of the crop. College football time of year don't stop. With Christopher Zurich, just another go down with the courage. Hard skill and will, bringing you the best 16. Serving up a plate for the football fiends. Breaking the best 16 college teams. Football fans, it's the show with your dreams. Hello, everybody, and welcome to week 10 of the Super 16 show. I am extremely excited. As you can see, I am rocking my Notre Dame green shirt. And why is that? Because the, one of the highlights of my weekend was uh, that little game in South Bend that happened to play. Well, what, what time was it? Uh, 6.30? Uh, Saturday night, it was an enjoyable, enjoyable game. Um, kind of something we needed for those folks who might not know. Uh, Notre Dame smashed um, Clemson, who was actually ranked. Um, they were actually ranked fifth in my poll, in our poll. But um, Notre Dame, there we go. See, there are five, and Notre Dame was what number? Number 65, number 74. Number 47, Notre Dame. And, and Notre Dame was number 47. So as you can see, I am totally excited, and I cannot wait to talk to you guys about some college football. But before we get started, uh, let me bring in Phil, because um, there was some excitement. Um, for the Bears this weekend, um, <laughs> I am beyond amazed that uh, Justin Fields almost had 200 yards rushing as a quarterback. What the hell was that? Listen, this young kid, Chris, good evening. And congratulations to you. I am so excited. And Notre Dame. I can't wait to see you when I come to Chicago. Oh, you have no idea. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> See? yeah, that's right. I'm, I'm gonna be doing that the whole time. <laughs> um, the story aside from Notre Dame, which is a huge story, is Justin Fields because Justin Fields is growing up before our eyes. Even your former teammate, Eric Kramer, who was very hard on Justin, is acknowledging the 180 that Justin has done from week one to now. He's growing up, and I think it has a lot to do with him building confidence, the game slowing down, but also an offensive coordinator that is understanding our offensive line is limited in pass pro. We're going to design some of these concepts to help utilize. This is – the anti naggy stuff <laughs> to help utilize his talents, his skill set. Now, when people come up, Phil, but he wasn't a runner at Ohio State. He wasn't, he didn't have to. He didn't have to. 
with Chicago, your left tackle's weak and a rookie. He's got good upside, good feet, good athleticism, but he's not strong enough. Right. Your left guard has been a rotational piece. Your center, we all know, even though he's from Notre Dame, he's weak on the inside. Then your right guard is Tevin Jenkins, who should be your left tackle, but you got him at right guard. Oh, hi, Kyle Long again, playing with the attitude. And he's learning to play guard. Man, your right tackle's been Larry Borum, now Riley Reef. So here you win and lose the games up front. Absolutely. You're doing a great job run blocking, but pass, bro. I call him the magician, <laughs> Justin Fields. Now, Ezra, I can't remember your name. You took my slang of calling him a magician. He's magical. And we've come up with a new name for him, Chris Zorich, on TTNL. We're going to make some T-shirts. We need a graphic designer to do this. Justin Copperfields. Because he, <laughs> he continues to oh make magic happen oh on God. the football field. And I'm, I'm Cherie, Cool Kennedy, Ivan, and Jim Larrison, who you're going to meet. Uh, we're all at the game watching for TTNL, watching this take place. And I'm sitting here with Claudio the Barber at my house watching it on the 75-inch. Oh, yes, nice. Yes, the 75-inch. Just every time I'm like, this kid, when you can't believe he's going to do it, he does it again. And it's just... An unbelievable showcase of what this guy does each and every week. And he deserves the credit and the kudos. Um, uh, the defensive performance was lackluster. Right. But it was it was one of these. And Claudio said it and read my mind. I, I appreciate the love. Claudio said it and read my mind. It's like we get the Offense great and the defense <laughs> suffers. Right. Like we can't put it all together. Right. But the story of the game, even as great as Justin was, and the great way the defense was able to get a stop and give you an opportunity, the punt block, they score on a punt block, this back and forth game, 35. I mean, you're seeing 32 points. On the you know, we're not used to that. And Justin, he gives you a chance each and every play. But the story was the unfortunate showcase of officiating. Now, Chris, I saw some of the clips, it was crazy. You can't crazy. you can't make it up. You've played the game. I just I've always said it, and I've always gotten pushback from blog boys and nerds and writers that don't understand okay you gotta well then you gotta make the next play football is a momentum it's seconds it's moments it's inches and a, a referee not throwing the flag on that third down on chase claypool who mm -hmm. made his presence felt right away i mean you could see this kid's size, athleticism, Cole Komet, all of a sudden, his buddies in the offense, he's playing like a different tight end. I'm dead. It's like, all of a sudden, are we trading for Quentin Nelson next? We're going to have the whole Notre Dame team over here. But the reality is, he made an impact, and that penalty was an easy call. Right. And this freaking jackass is standing there five feet from it, studying it, looking at it as if he's watching Cardinals fight in a tree. I'm like, what are you doing? Just, it's the easiest flag to throw, and he doesn't. And then another Notre Damer <laughs> drops what would be an amazing throw by Justin Fields for on fourth down to move the change, and Equinemius St. Brown 
I always say the difference between winning and losing is catching and dropping the football. Sure. Right there was the complete showcase of that. And listen, it is what it is. I don't make any excuses. I just call it like I know I see it. And I see it. Like this is the one thing I know that I know. I know I know <laughs> is football. And I could see the officials. I could see the, the plays. I could see the ball move. This was a game the Chicago Bears were going to see the magician make his final act. They stole that. It's like Chris Zorch and Candy Zor go to the, the greatest show on the planet in the final act. Oh, there's a fire alarm. We got to all leave. <laughs> That's it. You paid the money for that final act. And, you know, it begs the question. Gambling and so on. I just don't understand. I mean, there's full on, I call it a prom date hug. There's a defender behind him hugging him so he can't jump. Right. There's another right. guy. It's like, what are we doing here? If that was, I mean, Eddie Jackson's playing the football and bumps into him mm -hmm. and they get a flag. God forbid the Bears. Ah, oh, it, it reminded me of the Commanders game when Pettis gets tackled in the end zone and the ball, and there's no flag there. Yeah. It's just yeah. that stuff. It's unfortunate because that was my rant, Chris. I lost it on BHL, on the officials, on the drop, on the tackling, on the performance. I was watching some of it. I just, uh, well, I gave you a couple shout outs. Guy hasn't called me back yet. I know. Oh, Shame on him. See. What the hell is going on? <laughs> what the hell is going on out there? But listen, the great part of it on the seesaw of emotion to lose with a referee sucks. I'm sure you've remembered games where Absolutely. that stung you, right? But to finally know that you, like, this wasn't a flash in a pan uh, against New England. Mm -hmm. He goes out against right. Dallas, is playing right. his ass off there. Mm -hmm. He goes out again <laughs> against the Dolphins, and he's playing. I mean, the 61 yard touchdown run is a thing of beauty. Like, he, we haven't seen this in Chicago. So, the the growth right there, you know, you got a quarterback. Remember how we were questioning? Ah, mm -hmm. this doesn't look, just doesn't. I mean, we're, we have every right. I hate those people that where were, you were calling him, you were saying, I'm, all I'm doing is looking at tape. It looked like he didn't believe in himself, mm -hmm. and that's what I analyzed. If you don't <laughs> at quarterback, you're going to bust out of the league if you don't believe he's clearly found his soul and that's what i take away from that game it's unfortunate the refs and the dolphins versus the chicago bears were victorious <laughs> that's, the ref it. Hand. that's it that's it that's all i could say everything else I'm getting ready to fly out with the family, Tate and Dev. Nice. Coming to Chicago, meeting Uncle Chris. Hey, I hey. love it. <laughs> and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Detroit versus Chicago. Look at that. I love it. I love it. See? See? Um, one thing I didn't talk to, I forgot to ask you about, well, what's going on with the uh, the cap counter? The cap counter, he yes. has won. He has won, officially. David Kaplan was sweating bullets down, down the wire there. Even he had to admit that was a horse shit, was his <laughs> quote, non-call. And then to follow that... Think about being a Bears fan. They don't throw the flag. Right. Right. The very next play, Justin escapes to his right on fourth down. And, you know, Bears in the past throw incomplete. Blah, blah. He throws a perfect dime. Like, 
boom. Here's, I mean, it goes right through his hands. Like, oh, like he's at a car wash. Wow. wow. It just takes the life out of you. Because it's like, oh, what could have been? Sure. What could have been? It's amazing, bro. Absolutely amazing. The Chicago Bears led by Justin Fields, almost victorious. And I think Eberflus and company have to be excited about that. They do. And I'm not even call it I'm not even gonna call it a moral victory. This was this was an almost victory. Yeah, there is a rumor going around that Cap paid off the officials. There was a, it was cheaper to pay them <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> then, then pay for sixty folks at Gibson. Huh? Exactly. Let's nice. not pay for thirty folks at Gibson's. Gotcha. Right. Gotcha. Unbelievable. But that's it. That's that's my rant on the Bears tonight. Okay. It's it's, it's a little bit more calm than what was on the show. I was expecting a little bit more. Let's calm down I'm because. Just- I've digested the fact that the Chicago Bears have this quarterback. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a good thing to have two good backs. It's a good thing to take ownership of the mistakes right on the cusp of election day. Right. Right. You have a, you've already elected your quarterback. So that's where the Bears stand right now. And like you would say, uh, there you go. Yep, I like it. I like it. I like it. Exactly. Wow. Gotta love it. Now you're getting congratulations for Saturday. How about that? I, I, I wish I would have played. I wish I would have played. Uh, you probably wanted to suit up. Uh, you have no idea how much I wanted to suit up. This is one of the first kind of, even the. Clemson game a couple of years ago, um, I felt confident, but didn't want to suit up. This game, I felt confident, and then I was like, man, why not? You know, I would love to play for Coach Freeman. Yeah. But instead of suiting up for him, I was actually able to cheer for him, which was almost as, as, as nice as being out there. I'm not going to lie. I want to be out there so bad, though. Did you? So did you enjoy the view? You have no idea. It was anyway. I want to talk about it when I when I get to my Notre Dame section um, in a little bit. Well, let's start this show. Hey, let's why not start the show? Let's are do you, this. Are you ready? To start I, I, this college football. I might be. Week 10 of college football, I might be. So who might number 16 be? I don't know. Are you ready? Number 16. Go for Dane. Oh, shit. Here we go. Are you kidding me? Come on, man. You had to admit that was one of the most exciting freaking games you've ever seen. Come on. Absolutely. Absolutely. Are you finished texting while we're engaged in the show? I I, I was. I just make sure you finish. Are you done I'm yet? Tr- I'm planning. I'm I communicating. Sure you're done. I and I'm... make sure you're done. I'll wait. I'll wait for you. We'll, we'll all wait for you. People want to know who I know. <laughs> is Orange <laughs> there. Right. Is he coming? I do. I do, <laughs> I, I do too. I just want to make sure you're finished. I am finished. I'm eating dinner. I was hustling. Okay. Yes, I have a protein shake for dinner tonight. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> By the way, did you happen to watch the game? Oh, my God, I did. Okay, that's the type of reaction I'd like to hear. I was so cheer- cheering. For you the, were so cheering. For Notre Dame to win. How about that? How about you I was rooting phone, for them for take you. Take your phone, put it upside down. Put the phone upside down so you, so you don't see it. Oh, Cherie's taking the shot at you. Exactly, Cherie. Wow. Yeah, but not during the show. 
Unbelievable. You don't respond to any text, apparently. Unbelievable. Big timing, Sharif. It was a rough weekend, man. <laughs> rough I, celebrating. I I recovered yet. I'm not sure I've recovered yet. You're still celebrating. I Believe me, I am. I am. <laughs> no yeah, well, one I believed. Mean, literally, no one, no, believed. one, no one. No one believed. And I, I had a little doubt. I had a little doubt. But, you know, it's that... That, that crazy Irish feeling, man. I mean, I was telling folks that I really think we have a chance. And I didn't know we were going to be that dominant. I mean, when, when you look at, take a look at all facets of the game, I mean, special teams, offense, and defense, I mean, come on. I mean, Every it was. Facet. You're talking about six punt blocks in eight games. Like, has that ever happened before? Six punt blocks in eight games. Talk about a and, momentum um, changing play. He had two in one game. Your special I mean, teams coach is doing his job. I'll tell you that. The Bears special teams they, coach isn't. This they had a little uh, cost us the game. They had a little segment on him, and he was just he apparently he was all amped up this week in practice. So um I guess he saw something that that um he was gonna exploit during the game and and old that it happened. I mean, it, it was just – and I know I've been hard on the offensive and defensive line. They showed up. I mean, obviously it wasn't a perfect game for them, but, I mean, it was absolutely – I mean, it was just – it was crazy. And the idea that Clemson had and, – and you know I was worried about this. They had a week to prepare. I mean, it was it was a bye week for them. And they just went out there, man, and it was crazy because Notre Dame, I mean, they were doing some stuff with the lights that I'd never seen before. They had um, all the players in, in the tunnel. They turned off all the lights. It was they, they it. had these, these green lights. New age Notre Dame. I mean, seriously, man. If we, had, I, 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 I I'm not sure father, how we reacted. Father O'Callaghan. Yeah, exactly. Somebody. Can we put on the light, show? Yeah, really? Something happened <laughs> because that was definitely not what – what Notre Dame does, and and then afterward, man, they stormed the field, and it was funny because I saw I found this clip somewhere, and I put it on my social media. Yeah, I like um, Marcus cool. was being interviewed toward the end, and he was just he was fired up too, and he was talking stuff, and then literally the, the camera it had to be a drone, the camera that like fixed on him, and then it just drew out, and it kind of showed him in this mass of thousands, and it was like the will the, the where's Waldo thing. Yeah, it, it was like, and I was looking for him, looking for him, looking for him. I was like, well, I can't find him anymore. There were thousands of folks. I mean, that, that was hilarious, man. It was absolutely hilarious. It's a big win for Notre Dame, but I believe it's an even bigger win for Coach Freeman. Well, absolutely, and, and for the program. I mean, everybody was doubting him. Ahem. Ahem. Everybody was doubting him. Ahem. You too. I know you were. Not me. Um, at, not please. Me. Please. I was not. I was, Come on. I believe you were in asking him. questions. Well, you know, I had to ask good? the question Come because on, you're man. you're the thermometer man. of South Bend. And listen, I this was a huge win. And, and this was a huge win because I mean it wasn't a fluke like it was when they beat Clemson in 2000. Um, when DJ was a quarterback because uh, dude got COVID. So, right. I mean, this is real. And they came in number four, and Notre Dame was unranked. Oh, I'm so sorry. They were ranked number 47, right? And the idea that they had the gall to go out there and just ball, just play the best. I mean, those guys are never going to forget that game for the rest of their lives. I mean, I played in some big games, and their season isn't what they want it to be this year. But this may have made their season and literally kind of catapulted that momentum that Marcus yeah. Freeman needed to be successful for the rest of the year. I mean, they still have SC. They still have Boston College and Navy, you know, in, in, in a bowl game. And, you know, they have a chance to go out there and prove themselves, which – you know, after they sh shit the bed against Stanford, I mean, I was pissed. Everybody was pissed. And, you know, a lot of people are like, Chris, man, you know, how is Notre Dame 
ranked 16th after jumping from 47. Well, they actually beat three ranked teams, if you can believe that. And they lost by 11 to the number two team in the country. So the idea is that, you know, they can actually play when they want to, but you also have to talk about Marshall and Stanford. And so what I wanted to do was kind of shake all those little knuckleheads and say, you know, bring this enthusiasm against Stanford, you know, against Marshall, teams you know you can beat. Yeah. But look what happened. I mean, imagine if, okay, I understand Ohio State lost, but imagine if they were able to beat Marshall, who they're supposed to beat, and Stanford, who they're supposed to beat. I mean, imagine what this is, this is the conversation. Then it's, okay, now Notre Dame's in the top four, top five, maybe six in the country. And it changes the whole dialogue. But you have to live and learn. It was interesting because I had a conversation with somebody over there, and yeah. we we're both excited about the fact that um, they they want to see that the, the outcome of the martial loss, right? I mean, this is a test, and that – Test was, hey, everybody can be a leader in rah, rah, rah when everything's going well. But where's that leader at when everybody doubts you, when the whole country doubts you, and everybody thinks you suck? I want that leader on my team. So, damn, that was an awesome game. And I might be talking about them pretty soon, too, again. But let's move on to number 15. Number... 15, Penn State. Shit, man, I feel like you with a little rant, man. I had, a, I had that, that was kind of good, man. You let me I get let my you, flow there, and I you, felt good. You deserved man. it. You, know you had a, a victory I lap. I felt good, man. <laughs> okay, there we go. You needed Penn that. State. Yeah, I, I don't. You have no idea. You got no idea. Although I blew – I bleed blue and gold. I got to be mm-hmm. honest. And hopefully our, our listeners and watchers, folks that have seen the show, they actually truly believe that. That I am keeping 100. Yeah. And, and I'm totally honest all the time. And I do I think that Notre Dame believes that they're the 16th team comes? You're damn right I do. Because they went out there and proved themselves against three ranked teams that, that they beat. They weren't supposed to be because they got their ass beat by Marshall. Anyway, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going off. Okay, no. let's talk about Penn State now. Penn State, they're back in the top 16. And the reason why is because as I'm looking at these damn teams, man, they only got beat by who? Michigan. And Ohio State. Those are only and- two losses. The two big boys. The two big, and they 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 actually didn't get blown out. No, they didn't. No, they were right in the games. Um, well, Ohio State, State was Michigan. Well, they they, they were supposed to. They, they were actually supposed to to to, uh, to kill Ohio State. They were at home, man. It's that momentum that you were talking about, yeah. right? <laughs> it just happened for for uh, for Ohio State in. Um, Happy Valley, man. I mean, they, it wasn't supposed to happen like that, but it did. So they and they, they actually lost by uh, like by thirteen or something like that. Um, the only true blowout was against Michigan, like we like you know we talked about. So they were able to kind of jump back. Um, our, our our favorite uh, Penn State quarterback didn't do that great, but he was. They were able to get a win. And they're going to be playing Maryland next, so that's going to be probably another win. So we may even see them improve a little bit more. Yeah, Penn State, obviously the two losses in the Big Ten sets them back. Right. They're looking at these teams now with two losses. And Notre Dame is on an upswing, defeating two undefeated team, ranked teams. Well, three, one but that's okay. That's okay. Who was the three. third undefeated team? Uh, ranked, I said. Oh, okay. Come so on. They man. beat Syracuse, right? Yep. BYU. BYU. And a, a small and school in South Carolina called Clemson. Yeah. An undefeated rank. What were they? Correct. Fourth or well, third? Hey, they fourth in the 
BCS. So we're, we're only allowed to speak BCS. There's no other polls. I'm kidding. So in, in our poll, there are five. There you go. And when the when the BCS rankings came out, there were four. So I cannot wait to see what happens with, with them tomorrow because that's going to be really interesting to see how far they drop. Which is, a, which is actually going to be another conversation. So, so let's, let's, let's speed this up a little bit because yeah. I definitely want to talk about this 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 top four yes. that needs to happen. So let's go on to 14. Number 14, North Carolina. Now, you've liked this quarterback for a long time, and this dude is a fresh. I didn't realize he was a freshman, man. Yeah. Dude, they're, they're, they're talking about – he can get drafted this year. <laughs> well, That's what they're saying. Really? Yeah. Unbelievable. I mean, I mean, he is has. He a, Go ahead. I'm sorry. Is he? I don't. Is he a true freshman? Uh, either he's a freshman or he. Let, let me look him up. Um, I, I didn't see like. Let me see. I don't know if I saw like redshirt freshman or what, yeah. but um, I thought he was. A freshman, but anyway, even if he's a he, even if he's a sophomore, yep. he's ball. He actually has three thousand yards for the season. He put up almost three hundred yards uh, against Virginia. I mean, he's actually right up there. He's actually third on the QBR, and he's in a a, a terrible conference. He's in the ACC. Yeah, I mean, you see a baller, you see a baller, Pittsburgh. What they did there was outstanding. Yeah. Now he's. What do they have a bye week this week? Oh uh, no, they're actually playing uh, Wake Forest. Wake Forest. Saturday. This will yeah. be a good test for him. Yeah. This will be a good test for him. And you guys actually beat them, right? Yes, we. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They I were ranked about at that. the You're time. Right. Yeah. So that's another ranked team. No, I don't think they were. were they yes, ranked they the were because they. I remember they were like fifteen. No, well, hold on. Wait yes. a minute. They had the big win. Hold on. I think they were undefeated. I mean, they were. It was early on. Eighteen, they were at the time. Holy Nine shit! Are you pole. serious? Yeah, I just looked it up. Okay, well, that's there okay, you man. go. Another feather. See, hey man, the Notre Dame. <laughs> Come on, man. And <laughs> my last Notre Dame rant. Well, no, because we're talking about them against Clemson. Anyway. But they still have to play SC, and SC is ranked two, so it's going to be kind of interesting. So let's move on to SC action. Number 13, UFC. Now, I'm just starting to get much, starting to have much disappointment here, man, because, you know, Too I've been much a disappointment. Blues, I've been a Caleb Williams fan for, a long, for like literally it's when, when he was at Oklahoma. And he supplanted your boy. Um, what the hell's his name? Uh, oh, Dart. No, 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 no. Uh-uh. It, it, I'm, I'm being facetious. You, you actually don't like him. Um, you saw him do like a quarterback thing in like high school. Oh, the kid from uh, now oh, yeah. he's at South Carolina. Yes. What the heck's his name? Oh, I forgot. But, yeah. So, but, um, I mean, he had – I mean, yeah, four times. I mean, he balled, but it was Cal, and they almost lost. I mean, they only beat him by like a touchdown. So the idea that I mean, they're they're dropping. They dropped down two spots, and if I think they're doing that, and imagine what seventeen people that that think they know what they're talking about for the, the BCS <laughs> committee are doing, man. You know, but again, I mean, I am impressed with him, and. I think he's going to be in New York because I think he's he, he is having that type of season. And when I say New York, I mean the Heisman. Yeah, there's no doubt the talent this kid has is he can do he can move. He's very accurate. He's not just a running quarterback. He can stand in the oh. pocket, deliver the ball. He's got all the all tools. The all of them. Yeah, he's got it all. And again, their team though has been faltering. They have. 
They haven't put it on these opponents they should totally beat. Which which they were in the beginning, you know. That's the thing. So Lincoln Riley's jet. <laughs> Maybe coming back in the hangar, huh? It's coming wow. back in the hangar. <laughs> I mean, when when you look at the schedule, like the only ranked team they played actually they lost to, and that was Utah with the Utes, you know. So that's kind of another one. I mean, they got a, obviously got a huge game coming up uh, at the end of the year against Notre Dame, but they also play uh, UCLA. So let's, let's go to number, number 12. 12 number 12, Clemson. Oh, Lord, that was a long drop. How many? That was That was seven spots. That's a big drop. <laughs> it's a huge, and the reason why they dropped was because they just got dominated by an unranked team. I mean, come on, man. Seriously. I mean, that is, and at one point, it was like literally, I know the, the last touchdown was like a gimme that they had, but I mean, for they were dominated literally on all facets of the ball, man. Seriously. Special teams, offense, defense. I mean, the one guy, Wilson, had two picks. One for a touchdown. One for a touchdown. One for a touchdown. Remember that one? You ki- the the reality is DJ again. Up and down. They put the freshman in again. Right. He he got a pick. He had a pick. Yes. It was awesome. So did the so did the rookie. Or yes. the freshman to yes. a pick six. Right. Let me just tell you. Uh-oh. This rookie, we didn't even get to talk about this freshman corner from Notre Dame. You yes. talk about balling out in the biggest of moments. Because. I, mean, just, I, I honestly want to go back to Notre Dame when we're talking Clemson because I think it needs to be set. This kid yes, sir. was being picked on or whatever. They talked about the hype and the defensive back coach standing up for this kid, getting him recruited into their program. And then I don't care what anybody says. Clemson coming into Notre Dame, the everybody's believing Clemson is going to beat that ass. Everybody. That's it. Everybody was on that. And – the Notre Dame offensive line and this young defensive back were like, no, it ain't going to happen today. And everybody rose to the occasion of him making the plays. Obviously, the block punt was huge momentum. Sure. But that pick six, boy, it just is one of those moments. You can write a script on it, and I think – uh, Dabo was given a credit to Notre Dame, and it's deservedly so. And a it's prog- script. It's on a script. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> the program that's always on script, Clemson, right. goes down in Notre Dame, and I think it was a. I know a lot of TTNL fans were all thinking of you, Chris, and. Deservedly so. Get, you know, Clemson's a good football. They got a lot of NFL prospects no, out there. I, they are a very good team. Very good team. To get their asses served was a great moment. Off the passage. for Notre Dame. How did the, how does Clemson respond? That, how that's, does Clemson that's respond? They might the have. State. They might be in the top five games just for that reason, but. The, the next one is going to be Louisville, and I feel sorry for Louisville because if I was Dabo, <laughs> shit, I'd have had those guys practicing on the at the airport, on the plane, <laughs> when they landed. They'd be running sprints. They'd be running sprints, and the on the way, back, when, when we got back to the facility, I'd have been like, you know what, let's order some food, but we're going to practice here for the next several hours, man. I, I would be on fire. Losing like that to an unranked team, but I, I like that you took your own time for the to give Notre Dame some. some I was waiting for Clemson because I knew 
everybody wanted to hear what you had to say about Notre Dame. Come on. But I wanted to chime in. I think that I freshman freshman corner. Come on. First of all, Come the quarterback on, position. I mean, I play D-line. That's hard. But to be no, out on the, the island hardest. every play, there, there's no way, man. It's the hardest on D. I mean, I'm sorry. I it's, can't say. A lot of people say that, like, no, defensive I mean, end, defensive tackle getting no, fucking double no, teamed. No, is right. hard. no, no, no. Believe me. I, I spent uh, – I made a living doing that. I, yes, I agree with that. Yes. But – some of the shit that happens to me can be hidden. Yes, right? exactly. All <laughs> eyes are on you. No, not at all. Because as soon as that ball is released Tupac, in that quarterback. <laughs> I'm wearing Biggie right here. All eyes on you. All as eyes soon on as that me. ball is released from the quarterback's hand, all eyes are on that ball. And that corner is out there on an island with this dude a one-on-one. And you're a freshman? Come on, man. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see what what is going to happen to him in the future, man. I'm exactly. really excited about it. His confidence is going to be be growing. That's what it should be. Absolutely. Speaking of confidence growing, I don't know if it's growing or it's falling like the leaves here in New England. Hello. Number 11, Chris. Number 11, Alabama. Oh, this hurts, man. This was a rough week, man. This was oh, tough, man. Oh, my God. First of all, uh, you know what? What a game. How about this? You know, can we roll number 10, too? Because I want to talk about these two teams. Number 10, LSU. So, y'all may or may not know, I'm not a big Brian Kelly fan. Um, but <laughs> I give him a ton of respect because... He actually, his balls were huge. He oh, was yeah. At home, and at home, you're actually supposed to kick the field goal. You're not supposed to go for two yet. You only do that when you're away. But the, the fact that he was like, fuck it, let's go ahead and do it. I mean, come on, man. That And against Bama, his first year playing Saban? Dude, <laughs> that was crazy, man. It's Jason Taylor's son. Crazy. In the flat, the catch by Taylor prior to that. In the back of the yeah. end zone. Oh, yeah. That was that was a battle. That was an epic game, too. It was a great game. Great I game. so enjoyed Notre Dame beating Clemson. I really did. I was rooting for them for you, even in even though you didn't call me back. <laughs> How could <laughs> I? <laughs> I didn't even know where my phone. I didn't know where my phone was. This Alabama LSU is like dessert. It's like holy shit. Nike. Amazing. Stealing from Tommy Boy. Amazing. Amazing game. Both teams laying it on the line. And uh I wasn't I was cheering completely against Brian Kelly. I was I was obviously I was as well. <laughs> but I was rooting I mean, for Alabama I mean, to win. Absolutely. I, I, my I guy was Bryce Young. Fan. Exactly. I love me some Bryce Young. Dude. Bryce Young scramble in the pocket, Come get on. out, and like throw yeah. that deep right. ball down the right sideline right. for six, and he's smiling at the sideline. And I'm Come like, on. this kid is unbelievable. Unflappable. Man. It just, it, it, and it's great to see young kids like that, you know? Oh, my God. Or enjoying the game and not freaking out, and your coach is just a maniac. But, you know, he's, <laughs> he's, he's chill with him. Like, he's not freaking out. And, you know, some coaches would be – I mean, some players would be on fire with some of the shit that Nick tells them, you know? And he just takes it, rolls off his back, and he just goes with it. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that was a great game. I <sighs> got to give Coach Kelly credit. Hey, man. Like you. To have the brass ones to go for two, just believe in that quarterback. That kid exactly. transferring yeah. from Arizona State yep. under the umbrella of – the chaos that had gone on there mm -hmm. to be playing like he's been playing. That was amazing. That was so, amazing. Again, respect what he, the play he called him was interesting because I saw on social media that there was a, he, he made that same call. Um, I forgot what year it was when he was at Notre Dame and they actually called a pick on, I think the first the first receiver 
mm-hmm. on the play. And I mean, it was a total, it was a total bullshit play, but it was so interesting how he called that. And somebody actually talked to him about that. And he said that he knew he, he wouldn't get a call here, which he meant to hear. He meant by in the SEC. So yeah, he took in, that same in his day stadium. Again. Right. Exactly. <laughs> in the SEC, they don't right. call that. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Where they actually play football. Yes. But yeah, well, so in Chicago, they'll call it. <laughs> right. Right. They're right. On. There's a flag right. on the field. <laughs> but I mean. Amazing call by 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 Brian Kelly. Um, Bama is going to be playing Ole Miss, and I think they have an interesting. Uh, I'll, I'll wait till we get to, to Ole Miss and talk about that. But um, uh, LSU is going to be playing Arkansas, which I've been kind of jacked about. Um, I kind of want to see how they react to this win, right? Because I mean, Brian Kelly has actually been in some big games and have lost them. So this is his kind of first big game in the SEC that he's kind of won. So I want to see the reaction off of that. But let's move on to number nine. Number? Number nine. UCLA. Now, these guys moved up three spots, and it was interesting because I thought they were going to be out for a while. Uh, obviously, there was a whole bunch of craziness that, that went on above them, like Alabama and and um, uh, Clemson stuff. But they wound up demolishing uh, Arizona State 50 to 30 to – yeah, 36. But here's the thing. Our boy, DTR, because I know you like him, he only had like 170 yards or something like that. But it was enough for them to win. Yeah. Not his best game, but still winning football. That's what you want to see. UCLA is this, I don't know, this gnat. That's that fruit fly that's staying in your kitchen right now. Seriously, okay. but and, and and as they should, I mean, they only lost one game against Oregon, which, you know, is great, right? So, I mean, it's going to be interesting to kind of see what happens with them against SC because that's really going to determine, I think, the um, – ah, but I don't – you know, Oregon, ah, it's, it's, it's going to be rough, man. No, yeah. I, I, I this, agree. This game against USC will tell the tale of both teams. Yes, yes. They knocked – this is like now we're at the final stages of Connect Four. <laughs> right. Get back in – you, you got to see these moves that knock – out other people are you paying attention here ucla usc 13 in the super 16 poll show hey number nine ucla that'll be coming up let's go to number eight let's hey number eight oh miss So here's the scary thing, man. I'm like, uh, obviously we we love us some Lane Kiffin, and he might not be the coach anymore. You've you've heard all the stuff about. Um, I didn't hear the stuff yet. Okay, so catch me up. Off of a bye, he moved Uh-oh. up two spots. Next game is against Bama, but his name is rumored for the Auburn job. Oh no, you don't leave. Are you kidding me? You don't leave old dude, Miss for Auburn. Dude, what? Come on. War Eagle, come on. Oh. Folks, chime in. I mean, what's the better program? Are you kidding me? It's not even fucking close to me. Really? You don't think? I like old Miss. I love old Miss. But I think Auburn, Auburn has- I know Auburn's been. It, they've had higher recruiting classes and been more consistent. In that department, right? But how many how many national champions have they had? Auburn, yeah. I'm sure more than Ole Miss. I know. That's why I would stay at Ole Miss and write my own story. You're creating a culture there. Uh, I understand that part, but thank you, Jason. But I mean, I know Auburn 
it, it's it's the money. I mean, and I'm pretty sure Auburn's going to come up with, with the ten million. Ole Miss has one of the best tailgates in the the world, oh, okay. right? Which you can't enjoy. Which you can't enjoy. I'm not so, saying that. I'm saying that he's <laughs> building the program. Then, then you build it. I mean, I would never. You're in the same. You're in the SEC. I'm yes, both. Right. I feel like you continue to move around. Your story is that you're a lever. You're never but, a builder. But he has that reputation already. He was I know, already now's the time. You're in the perfect fucking spot. He was already in language. A, a kid show. <laughs> Tennessee <laughs> was not what it was. So. Uh, I don't know if I leave Nebraska for. Uh, oh my god! For you don't go to Nebraska. We've seen that story play out before. The only one that's winning in Nebraska is Tom Osborne. <laughs> wow! So, it's just you don't go to Nebraska. Any anyway, if he leaves Old Miss, I for the record, Chris. Yes, for the record, mistake to go to Auburn. For me, yes, you fight. Uh, you definitely have the rivalry. The Iron Bowl, come on, you get the you know, Iron Nick, Bowl. That's Nick, all you Nick get. It's not going to be there forever. Well, it's not. I want to coach against the best. So, again, if he's strategically moving around to try to finagle, win a national championship. You could. You can't win a national championship at Ole Miss. <laughs> Probably not. I disagree. Wait, are they in the West or wait? Where are they? Are they? Are they in the? Um... I forget the SEC. Let's look. They play Alabama too. Well, I know they. Right, I know they play them. They're, that's their next game. I know they play. Them. I'm just saying. If you're gonna go into that, the I we got the Iron Bowl. Right. I'm just saying we they play Alabama too. They are in the West. SEC West. Right. LSU Ole Miss. Um holy shit. Jumped. LSU, Ole Miss, Alabama, Mississippi State, and Arkansas are in the West. Mm-hmm. They don't give me the East, for God's sake. How can we get, well, well, everybody else is in the East. That I know, but sad. I wanted to give the names, but this oh, website stinks. <laughs> what is it, ESPN? Oh, he, he just left. So thanks, buddy. So as our buddy Phil was saying after he just got he booted himself off the... I guess I'm not allowed chair. to say that website stinks. <laughs> it just bounced me out. <laughs> Just it was the, me out. The, the interweb police. You're gonna bounce me you. out. Speaking about being bounced out, and this is just a little caveat. How many games do you think um Texas AM has won? Or no, how lost? lost let's say lost. All out of them. Damn <laughs> here. I was I couldn't believe this when I was looking for um came in with that teams. swagger. His Dude. sons are wearing gold chains like they're Dude. in um all bad that, video with cool all that Jay NIL back. money. And the first one was they, they lost the app state. Yep. And then they go on. I mean they won two after that, but listen to this. They yeah. lost to Mississippi State, lost to Alabama, lost to South Carolina. Lost to Ole Miss and just lost to Florida. Jesus, dude, they're gone. Their new addition, count me out, dude. Count they've they've lost six out. games this year, bro. I didn't know that. Yeah, bro. Holy crap! All right, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to talk about this. They had that swagger for a second <laughs> for like a Saban minute. So Alabama, how does he not get fired? Because his contracts, because they're gonna, they gotta pay him out. I can't believe Frank Wright got fired today. Oh my you god! You see that? Yes. Jeff Saturday. Yes. Just, Jeff he was a Saturday. For ESPN. Where's Jeff Saturday coaching from? Well, he, he actually did coach in high school, so. No, I know, but his name just. And well, it's just an interim title, man. Bro, that's crazy. Like, hasn't even been on the Phil. staff. Phil. Phil. 
He was yeah. consulting for them. He was consulting. He was yeah. he was basically backstabbing Frank Reich. That's what that means. Apparently. Anyway, let's, All go right. to, let's go to number seven. Number seven, Utah. The Utes. We love the us. Utes. Utes. Now, this is going to be interesting because they got some good games coming up. However, uh, they just beat Colorado 49 to 10, which is what's supposed to happen. Utes. And these teams that are doing well. And so this is the reason why I'm a huge Ute fan because I know my, my boy Keith, uh, when I showed him one of my polls, he was like, Utah, what the hell? The hell's going to Utah? So I had to kind of give him the, the dissertation and explain to them why, explain to him, why well, I love me some Utes. I love the Utes. Gotta love the Utes. And my porn star quarterback. What's his name again? Um, oh, God. Uh, Cameron Rising. Rising. That's See? it. Rising. There we go. Keep on rising to yes. the top. One more mind say, give it all you got. Give it all you got. Oh, hey. Utes. So Please. we have, they have Stanford next, which obviously is going to be a, a win. But after that, they have um, Oregon, there which is, is. going to be very so interesting. Don't say probably a win. Remember that with Notre Dame. Well, that's true. Because I, I yeah, just I jinxed mean, the Utes. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. Well, the reality is the Utes, the Utes, the Utes are on fire. Wow. Speaking about Oregon, Oregon number six, Oregon. Dude, our boy Bo is on fire. Bo, Bo, <laughs> I'm so happy for him, man. Bro, talk about a so, story. Is he like a six year senior or like, yeah, what? He, I oh, think he, he is. is. Ah, okay, yeah. Well, I hope he gets some love, man, because I mean. He he totally deserves it, man. After getting his ass kicked at Auburn and doing that whole Auburn thing and, and literally re- revitalizing this for the for a first time for the first time head coach at Oregon, first time head coach started off poorly. The moment the, eh, the energy poorly, yeah, yeah, I would say that no, they got spanked. Went, I know, but I mean, it wasn't they like got smashed. But yes, they did. Well, by the number one team in the country. Yes, at well. At they the were. Time, yes. They were. Yes, they were. But then they slipped. But to your point, tough way to start out, especially when the head coach, this guy's your former defensive coordinator of the opponent, too. At jo- in in his Georgia. first, yeah, in his first, first game. game. So it was like, uh, like with a new quarterback. Yes. So they're just getting their feet wet in this. So to see where they have come. To your point, Bo Nix is a big story. I Huge. love his moxie and Huge. athleticism. Huge. And, I mean, at that point, when you think about, I mean, and that was the, the smart thing they did was kind of lose early, right? Because, yeah. I mean, they're up five now, you know? They're up to number five. I'm sorry, number six, which is great. Number six. Number five. Number five. Tennessee. This game. Damn. This game. Oh, Damn. Man. There was then it started I, raining on the parade, too. I wasn't was, expe- Oh, Lord. I mean, we, we want to start. It was just, they talk about shutting folk down. And I mean, everybody was loving on Hendon, and which they should. I mean, Hooker, Hooker. Everybody's lo- loving on Hooker, man. But a lot damn. of people loving Hookers. I mean, Hooker. Wow. You waited all week to say that, didn't you? <laughs> wow. Hilarious. You set it up. I just had to make sure. You know how many people was, I can't believe he missed that line. I can't let that go by. <laughs> I'm Jeter at short. I got to scoop that up and throw it the first. Hello. That Hello. was an amazing game, though, man. No. I mean, that, that was, again. Your was boy. You had that That's in Cologne. <laughs> I mean, thank you. I mean, he is my guy, man. And I was thinking about this too, watching the game. And I was like, you know what? 
I would take him in a minute. You know, he, you know, he's five eleven, right? I mean, I would take him because he's dude, five eleven. He, yes, I dude, swear he was six one. <laughs> baller man, just ball, and, and, and literally more when, athletic. He, Drew Brees. He, he ran. He ran a touchdown in. Yeah, that I run mean, through. I mean, come on, man. In faking people out, he had a little juke in him. He had come a on, juke. Man. Then he even had a taunt. He picked up the phone because yep. someone gave yep. away his number. Yep, yep. I heard about that, man. That was crazy. <laughs> People were calling him at all hours of the night. Cause like, I mean, I'm just dude. gonna put my phone on silent. Like, screw you guys. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> right? How about this though? And and again, I I know I know people are probably sick of me talking about him, but I mean, I, I love the dude because of what he had to overcome. Right. And the fact that he came back and, and wanted to prove um, that last year wasn't even a fluke, but dude, we're talking about national champs. We weren't talking about like winning like the, the SEC West or something like that. We're right. talking about the freaking Natty, dude. The I national. mean, there's there's a strong possibility mm-hmm. that they could win again. Like, like I don't know what what the Vegas odds Absolutely. are, but, dude. After this game, but it's gonna be so interesting. So let's. Kind of heard. Let's, let's, let's get run the through these. I want to talk about the top four stuff. Yeah, we're we're running late here. Yes, we are. Number four, TCU. <sighs> the Horn Frogs. Yeah. Uh, You're not happy frog. with them there. Uh, Do they belong there? Uh, uh, in the uh, Big Twelve. Uh, uh, the horn uh, frogs. Uh, Are you having regrets? Uh, however, they're undefeated. The quarterback has a great story. I'm all about stories. Yes. Our dude was a backup, mm-hmm. got the call, and he is freaking balling, man. So, so that part I like. I, I spent a bunch of time on the bench when I was at Notre Dame my first year. So I know how that how that feels and having a chance to come in and make a difference is, is huge. So I'm a fan for that, but we'll see, we'll see where they go. They, yes, we will. they're obviously in a conference that doesn't stand up with on the defense? bigger two on defense. Oh, okay. Oh, you mean in general. Okay. I'm sorry. No, their conference, kind of defense. their opponents, maybe their defense as well. <laughs> and there's no de- they don't play defense in the Big Twelve. You know that. <laughs> and then like, like what they beat like like Kansas, and everybody's jacked up about Kansas, right? And okay, Oklahoma, I could see, but like, oh, yes, thank you very much. I appreciate Oklahoma, that. Right. Oklahoma State, they beat. Well, you know, I was, I was, a, I was. A, the a mullet, mullet has fan. dropped yeah. like he's going yeah, to the bar- well, Claudio the barber. Dude, after they, after they got blown out 48 nothing. Holy cow. Exactly. All right, so let's SMU, go to... SMU, Oklahoma. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was That's listing okay. them. I'm, I'm trying to get, get through let's this. Go. Let's, go let's go. Okay, let's go to the meat. You want let's the go. filet? I can't believe this is three. Oh. Number three, Michigan. What? There it is. What? Number I, two. seriously, two. You, you have number. You have number two. Michigan. You got Michigan number two. Wow. Number really? two. Michigan. Tell them. Rutgers. Coach. They're supposed to be. Mm. Wow. I can't believe George playing these games. <laughs> <laughs> they're supposed to be Rutgers, man. Come on, Rutgers, and then All right, Rutgers. I know, but I mean, we've the, seen the, teams the lose. Go for the same thing. Go for Ohio State, man. Because Ohio well, State almost got of, beat by Northwestern. Play number, two, play number two so we can talk about them both together. Let's go. Number two. Where is it? Number two. Oh, I scrolled too far. Number two. Ohio State. So the only reason why, and I, I these, these are like 2A and 2B, but like, Northwestern was not supposed to win, right? I mean, Ohio State was supposed to dominate them, but they couldn't because the Lord of because it's crazy ass weather in Chicago. Oh, don't give the weather. Hey man, 
This and is... then Michigan is supposed to be Rutgers, man. Gary, where are you? Oh. <laughs> Michigan was supposed to be Rutgers. Right. They did. They did what be. they were supposed to do. Supposed to do. And so did Ohio State. Supposed to do. Notre Dame was supposed to beat Stanford. They're supposed to do, but they didn't. Exactly. So you they, just they, they play get, who's right, on your right, schedule. Right. That's what you do. And you right. do what you're supposed to do. Supposed to do. So Michigan has Nebraska and Ohio State has Indiana. So both teams should not stoop to the level of the competition. They should Correct. Which they won't. Only beat. Which they won't. Thus well, meaning... Then they face off. They got two games before they face off. How about your boy Stroud looking pedestrian, HL says. How about that? Pedestrian. Hmm. What Hmm. do you think of that? 76 yards, man. (laughs) But he still has the number one quarterback ranking. Dude, you can't deny this dude, man. Come on. 24. The only guy that has more yards is... uh, uh, what's his face from um from from North Carolina? Your guy. Well, the freshman dude, the, the retro freshman guy. Well, they go there. You got to play in the weather too. Can't okay. make any excuses. All right, so let's let's quick let's hit number one. Let's go to one. number one. Number one, Georgia. Stetson Bennett, man, come on, man. There come he is. On. He's been waiting. Oh man! Oh my God! That I would take that. He should get the Heisman. He should get every award except for the the hey, <laughs> the position specific awards. Because just I mean, give on, him the Walter Camp, everything, everything. The Davy O'Brien. How do you not? Davy O'Brien. Who's Dude, Davy O'Brien? This guy. One story, of the fathers at in at, at Notre Dame. This guy, this guy's story <laughs> is beyond belief, man. Come on. I mean, no one, no one does this. No, no one, one does. No it. one is told get the hell out of the program. Comes back to Georgia. Come back, and then they say go back to. to Wins a natty. Comes back with all the pressure on him. Is playing. He played his best game last week. How about that? Biggest game of the season. Biggest game, man. Ball. He was and on every, my local channel. Who did not my... doubt him? Everybody did. 5'11", come on, man. It was on my local channel, and I have one of those. I don't know if you have, because I stream everything, so my locals don't come in sometimes. Okay. So I have this little black, it looks like a a piece of plastic that's about this oh, big. Oh, the antenna? The antenna. Yeah. So I used to stick it on the window here right. in my studio, and it comes right, right in, right? All right. of a sudden... There's no signal. I'm going crazy. I had to run it outside no. through the door oh and stick God. it on my wall of my siding outside on the That's deck. That's hilarious. And then I was able to watch Tennessee, Georgia. That's hilarious. CBS making me do all these different things to watch these games. The local stations. The so- locals. <laughs> They got Mississippi coming up. Mississippi State coming up. I'm going to see what's going on there. So what I want to talk about, though, is what is going to happen on Tuesday when the college football playoff rankings come out and also what this looks like for the future, right? So the top four, obviously Alabama is out. Um, Their top four was Tennessee, Ohio State, Georgia, Clemson, right? So how far does Tennessee drop in their rankings? How far do you drop them? Fifth? Are they fifth? How I far do I drop that. Tennessee? Right, yeah. I think you put them perfectly there. Okay. You can't take away what they've done. Right, exactly, exactly. When they get housed at Georgia. It's right. not like this was at Tennessee. Right. They didn't so, play their best. If they're five, right, so you still have Ohio State, Michigan, who are 2-3. They have to play. 
So how far does Ohio State drop if they lose? How far does Michigan drop if they lose, right? So now you're looking at TCU possibly getting into the top three. This is where it's got to be measured based on moment played, ranking played at time. You know what I'm saying? You can't go. It's got to stick to your methodology. Well, I, I, I'm fine with it. I mean, I'm fine with it. If, if TCU wins out, right? So let's say TCU, but see, it's that conference, man. You, you can't, it's, it's, it's not fair to kind of judge them against Tennessee and Georgia, right? Georgia. Because they're... <laughs> They're, uh, I mean, Oklahoma State, who got blown out, they beat them. Yeah, I mean, it's and they were ranked, they were supposed to be good, right? So, you, you got Kansas, who they hadn't been good forever, they all of a sudden had a good year. That's what I'm saying. Those moments, those teams are prepared based on the rankings at the time. Mm -hmm. We can go back on our shows and look at your rankings. That shouldn't go unnoticed. That shouldn't. That's how I feel in football. You well, are now defining your journey. Right. So. But I think that what's going to happen, because right now they have Texas, Baylor, and Iowa State left. And for TCU. For, exactly. Baylor, the first ever two-loss team to stay <laughs> in the 16 ball. In the Super 16 for like 16 <laughs> weeks. So, so they're finally out Baylor. of there. Uh, I they're do love some Baylor, but they're finally Listen, out Notre of there. Dame's a two-loss hey, team. They're a three-loss team. Three? Three? Holy what God, is that, gotta... Velvet? It's Let me the talk only three-loss team in hey, the whole Hey, you're talking 16. about the Velvet? What is that, Velvet? What is that, a homer? Come on. <laughs> but that's what's going to boil down to, right? So now does a – Jeepers, creepers. Thank you. Does the undefeated TCU belong in the top four if you have a one-loss Big Ten team above them? It is definitely something that you're going to have to look at based on time they play. I just go back to they're not going to do that. We've seen this before. These writers and their polls have fallen by the wayside based on past history. Well, fact, and then I haven't talked about got, Some teams got um, in the past, like, what was it? Central Florida? What was that? They were undefeated. They gave themselves a national. Oh, right. Remember, yeah, yeah. That was, that was, yeah, yeah. But they were, they beat, you know, who they played. It wasn't a And at the time, there was, yeah, there were several ranked teams at the time they played that ended up washing out. You know what I'm saying? They were ranked right. like 13. Right. right. No, then they understand. beat them. Then they lose. Now they're 20 ranked. And then they get spanked by somebody else. And then they're gone. And the story gets written differently. That's what I don't like. That's why I'm hoping that they get to another level in regards to this being seen differently. But I, it's going to be interesting because right now, if Tennessee wins out, right, they're obviously going to move up, okay, because um, they're at five. Ohio State still has to play Michigan, right? So they're, I mean, it's, oh, I would love to see that, wouldn't you? Hell that would yeah. be great. You wow. guys were close. You could have set that up. Hey, man. Hey, but it was a learning year, man. It was a learning year. Next year, you better watch the hell out, man. Anyway. <laughs> He's ready. He almost went down that rabbit hole. Again. <laughs> I, did, I did, man. I did. But it's just going to be interesting because if Tennessee wins out. Yes. TCU wins out. Yes. Right? Georgia beats LSU for the for the um, the SEC championship, yes. right? So Georgia wins out; they're undefeated, 
and Michigan beats Ohio State, or Ohio State beats Michigan. Let's go blue. How far? How far are they going to drop? And then you got TCU in the mix. I think Michigan and Ohio State have proven if they face off, which and they're both undefeated, the drop is going to be minuscule. Okay. Based on what they're that, I think that's fair. Just like you dropping Tennessee to five. Right. This team was number one. They beat upset Alabama. Yep. Again, I don't know how these writers do things, but I feel like, you know, I only disagree. I think Michigan's better than Ohio State. I think mm-hmm. Michigan's going to beat Ohio State. And that's where me and you have only disagreed. The whole year. Uh, but that's okay. Your, your philosophy in ranking these teams, like Georgia proved to me. You're the number one team in the country, yes, no yes, doubt. Sir. If you had Ohio State at one, I was getting ready to destroy. Because you know, I never, I just forward it to Ron. I know, I, I know, I, I like watch, that. I, I like want to just man. react naturally well, to your rankings. And me and you differ at two. That's Michigan for me. Yes. And everything else, I really, I see, I see where you're going, and. The Clemson loss dropped them seven spots. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if that's an indictment on Notre Dame or on Clemson. Well, it should be. We saw it Clemson. Clemson should have lost to Syracuse right. if Dean Dino was a good head coach in those sure. moments. But sure. El Nino is right that SEC bias, but – but it's true, and, and, and you, you can throw me in there because I, I, I believe it. That's that's where the best football's played. I like the Big Ten. I think people always sleep. The Big Ten always fundamentally. I mean, even the last year, look at Big Ten facing off the SEC. They were six and out, I believe, or five and one. One year they the, under, uh, they beat all of the SEC teams in the bowl games, right? Well, except it, the big game, obviously. It, what was that score? I forgot. <laughs> I forgot. What was that score again? I'm sorry. Michigan got, got beat right. pretty bad by. What was the final? I don't remember. It was like it was. It was. I think it was, it was like 14, 16, right? No. 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 Okay. All right. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> taking his shots. Hey. All right. So I, I just want to talk about that. And we can just kind of roll over. I mean, I know we're 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 gonna crush for time here. Uh yes. that that actually was my kind of final thought because I just think it's gonna be really interesting, like the last kind of wait couple weeks. What? Final oh, thoughts. Sorry. Right. Sorry. With Chris Sorich. I kind of rearranged it there because I, I wanted to get this in because I think it's going to be a crazy, like, last couple weeks, man, because these teams are losing. We got this TCU, we got this renegade, undefeated team that's, you know, playing Kansas while these other teams are, like, beating, uh, like, Tennessee. Like, yeah. it just, come on, man. And Ohio State. I mean, come, come on. You know, if, if if Michigan and, and or or if Michigan loses close to, to um Ohio State, are are they gonna go under TCU? Anyway, those are questions for next week. Um we want to shoot just for to go over the la- to go over the 16 and then we can shoot to the let's final go five games. over Chris Zorge's new super 16 poll. All right, all right, all right. All right, we got all the the movie references again this week. <laughs> Number 16. You know them from the state of Indiana. Ho! South Bend. Ho! Check out miniclover.com. Wow. If you want to check out a little place to stay in there South you Bend, you got number 16. Notre Dame. Notre Dame. Notre Dame. I always say Notre Dame. I say Notre Dame, but a lot of people say Notre Dame, so I kind of make fun of them. Do they make fun of me for saying Notre? I say Notre too. Okay. Notre, Notre to you. To you too, Notre. <laughs> noted. Duly noted. Number 15, Penn State. Simple uniforms. 
simply 15 this week. Wow. 14, North Carolina with my guy, the freshman quarterback lighting up. Number 13, USC. The Trojans are still going to face off soon to Notre Dame. Clemson dropping seven places to number 12, the Tigers. Number 11, Alabama. That, was, that has never been stated before. Ever. 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 Out That's of the, the last track. time we said what? 11 years. Alabama. Years. Oh, my God. Saran Stacy was running the ball back then. Oh, my God. <laughs> Number 10, LSU. Brian Kelly says, how about that, SEC? Wow. How about that, How about that, that Nick Saban? How about that? <laughs> Let me show you how big my two. balls are. I might be 10, but we're going for two. <laughs> Number 9, UCLA, the Bruins. Chip Kelly. Chip Kelly. Big matchup with USC. The Battle of California. Number eight. Is Lane staying or is he going? Woo! We know Lane's going. always going somewhere. We know going. He's about to go out of football if he continues to do that. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Number seven, the Utes. The two of Utes better get this show over, my wife said. Utah. <laughs> I'm trying. No, I'm, I'm trying. trying stuff. Number six, Oregon, the Ducks. Number five, Tennessee, the Volunteers volunteered a loss this past weekend. Wow, number four, so TCU, Texas Christian. Number three, go blue. I got him number two, guys. Don't forget that. <laughs> Don't listen to this guy. <laughs> number Two on Chris's poll, Ohio State, and number one, Georgia, Georgia. The Bulldogs. There is Chris Zorich's poll. Super 16 poll show every week. We'll run through this right quick because there's not that many huge, huge games. Um, the top six guys aren't going to have any issues. Uh, first game is Alabama Ole Miss. I want to see what happens when uh, Saban it, it really has no chance of getting into the final four and see what he does to his opponents after this. And Ole Miss, let's see how long our buddy Lane Kiffin is going to stay in the at, at, at Ole Miss. Hip hop hooray. Lane stay. <laughs> hey, is he gonna? <laughs> we That's have gonna be a huge story. Georgia, Mississippi State. Mm -hmm. uh, I am just kind of curious to see if they're able to kind of sustain this, which I think they will. But unfortunately, this has not been a year that I should be saying things like that. But um, I think it's gonna be an interesting game. I want to see how Tennessee is gonna bounce back. They're gonna play Mizzou. That should be an easy win for them, but I have to learn my lesson. TCU, they're going to play Arkansas, and here's, here's this is what scares me about this game. Yes. Arkansas got beat by Liberty, bro. Liberty. Liberty. Liberty, Liberty. Sam Ritigliano. Liberty. Liberty. And the Liberty Flames. Liberty. <laughs> We're talking about Hugh Freeze, right? We're talking about yes. – he might be gone. Anyway. Hugh. Um, Hugh's going to be gone. This, I think, is going to be an interesting game because um, uh, I'm going to see if LSU can sustain that. Harrison jumping in on you, too. Michigan is number two for shoe. Wow. For shoe. Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. I, I made a mistake. That LSU, I got LSU. I got TCU confused with LSU. My bad. Oh, no worries. But. No worries. But. TCU is playing Texas. Texas, right and there. And I think Texas is a better team, so it's going to be interesting to see. So that's going to be the game. Can Thank Texas you very much, Benjamin. I appreciate that. knock the TCU worries from yes. your, your yes, poll? Yes, yes, exactly. Exactly. I think they can. I think it's going to be a huge game, huge game. So, And then last but not least, I mentioned before, um, oh, oh, wow, I didn't thought about that. Um, that could LSU and Arkansas. Arkansas came back. They just got embarrassed by Liberty Bibbity and LSU's Liberty coming off Bobbity a big Bobbity. loss. Is it gonna is it gonna affect them? So let's see how that's gonna go. And my, my final thoughts were the conversation we had about the top 
five teams and how that's going to shake out. So, Listen, every week, Chris Zorich jumps on the airwaves. This week, it was tears of joy. Tears of joy. For this guy. You don't have, you don't have any of me crying and laughing and being happy? <laughs> we need a happy pick. Yes, I, I need a there happy pick. Oh, is. there we go. There, there we he go. is. Hey, I like it, I like it, I like it. Hey, yes. There um, he is. Look, hey. Notre Dame won. Let me tell you that. All right, Shereen. I'm not happy. There he is, happy. Are we having a repeat of this picture? Zorich, we, what's we better, going on? We better if you show up. <laughs> Hopefully your family will be there, but, you know. I'm going to be there. We'll I promise. We'll the see. All Madden. Former All Madden, three time All American. Hey. At Notre Dame, one of the great guys. Even if he doesn't text you back, I love this guy. Every week, he was partying for days. Days, hours. (laughs) He's still partying. I'm still, you have no idea. (laughs) For his Notre Dame fighting Irish. A huge win. Huge win for the Freeman era. Huge. Huge. Now we see where the, if they build upon that, obviously some big games coming up, setting up for two weeks from now. This weekend, we will be in Chicago. Hey. Are you coming to the tailgate? Yes. Yes. Okay. My fingers are the, crossed right underneath the picture here. We had to, like, fingers are crossed, yes. you say. I'm trying to get one of the things you're going to one of the things you're going to be at. Yes. Okay. Now get at that commitment. I'm putting pressure on you live. Yes, we are live on television. <laughs> live. Bullets is coming to town. Uh oh, watch out! I got to come now. Then bullets is coming to town. It's going to flying in from Cali. So his brother was in Electric Boogaloo. Were you a break dancer, Chris? <laughs> wow. No, I was not. But I bet you were. I was. Pop blocking? I was. They pop called me so- Soda Pop. Whoa. I was break dancing and doing my thing. You're for real. Yeah. They called you Soda Pop, right? That was my nick. That was my break wow. dancing nickname. Did you wow. have a break dancing nickname? Yeah, I kind of missed that. That you didn't that, get into that. No, I, I, no I, cardboard no. spins for Zoe. Yeah, it was a little little too big to be spent on cardboard, but you know. <laughs> I miss that thing. Let me ask you one other thing. Yes, Have sir. you started Lord of the Rings? Rings of Power. I finished uh, it. Okay. I, really, I liked I, I'm, it. I'm stuck on so all right. So but I'm I'm trying not to compare it against Game of Thrones. Right, you can't. It's just, I know it, but it's hard because it's like like the fantasy stuff is like really, really like fan. I don't know. This is kind of weird. It's like really fantasy. Because you and don't I like think, elves, dwarves, and all that. I like some elves. I mean, you know, but like, <laughs> I'm just like, I'm like, I'm just like saying this is not good. And it's not so much the acting part. Freaking it's, Notre Dame's a leprechaun, for God's sake. <laughs> I'm just not there yet. I, I watched, where am I at? Now? I'm at where, um, where. Oh, you've started it. Yeah. No, yeah. I watched okay. a couple episodes. I'm at where, oh, you know, oh, girls, this. You know, huge warrior, and you know she can't be touched. And it's like so. I'm at the part where she comes into the. Uh, oh yeah. The she comes elf. out of the water. The dude takes her over he to takes the, her onto the boat. Yeah. Well, There's right. But twi- then he lands with twist. her. Well, but then he lands with her in that city, and then everybody doesn't like her, and then now she's like telling people what to do. Well, you'll see why. They actually I'll bring it why. all together. I'm telling you. Okay. I'm, I'm, but I, I'm going to start the House of Dragon. Yes. Yes. Dragons with an S. House of Dragons. Right. You'll see. It, it's going to be. This is Khaleesi's family. It, like, it is. It, story, it's the gonna backstory. Be, it's gonna, yes, exactly. There's no Khaleesi and in his. You're going to love this shit. I can't you're wait. Steph and I are starting that up. That's, I cannot wait next. to talk to you about that because uh, I'm trying on your rings of power there. All right, just run it through. They will set it up. If you guys have any shows that we should be watching, uh, 
then you'll see. We'll check them out too. We'll be talking all about that as we move on through this season and doing our bowl coverage again. And we're going to have a lot of fun. Yes, we are. As Get always. a couple guests on here. Yes, we will. And hopefully we'll see you out this weekend. Tomorrow night, it's the Keeping It Fantasy show. Oh. I'm not used to I'm used to Tuesday nights. I know. How about right? that? We were getting exactly. used to And then Wednesday on Keeping It 100, we have Kenneth Davis. Oh. From the Under Center podcast. He'll also be hanging out with us this weekend. And we'll talk about that. He he returns a text, sure. That's what happens when you have friends. <laughs> oh, that'll be Wednesday night, keeping it 100. Kenneth Davis talking about Justin Fields, Eberflus, Getze. How about Cole Komet? Hey. You didn't even get to Notre Dame waking up, waking up. And I loved how, did you see how uh, Chase Claypool was signing the uh... – the, the Mitch Trubisky jerseys when people oh, put yeah. tape over the, the name. Yeah. That was freaking hilarious. <laughs> that was hey, hilarious. We got to keep uh, costs down. I told my son, I'm like, listen, hilarious. might have to just get, what's your favorite number? We'll get your name on the jersey. Right. As these players right. move out of the city. <laughs> My son Devin's holding out hope Tariq Cohen's coming back. I'm like, Devin, I don't know. Like, Cherie needs a, we're, we're go funding <laughs> Cherie's Khalil Mack jersey. There we go. We got to get her a different jersey. But anyway, another great show. Keeping it 100 Wednesday. Uh, follow us everywhere on the socials for all the updates. I'm working on the All 22 for you patrons. And then we'll be live in Chicago this weekend. We'll be tailgating. I'm going to announce where we're going to be tailgating tomorrow, uh, Wednesday night. Wednesday night. I'm waiting. Obviously, those of you that didn't hear, unfortunately, asking for prayers and positive energy sent towards Shane and his family. Um, that would be great if you could do that. We'll keep you posted here on all things Chicago Bears and college football. Next week, we'll be back with Chris Zorich. We might have to do Tuesday, Chris. Now I think of it because I'll be traveling out of Chicago <laughs> next Monday. I don't even know when my flight Must be is. Nice. Must be nice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's my favorite. Hey, I got to make time for you. Oh, make for, the for, for the youth. For the youth. All right. We had a great show. The Super 16. Oh, so Look, did you it. did it great tonight. I Perfectly. did it. I did. Oh, also and... want to thank Football Writers Association of America. We forgot, to thank, yes. I forgot to thank them. And the football, the National Football Foundation for allowing us to do this and allowing me to vote in the Super 16 poll. Well, you do it every week. Next week, we'll be back. Let's just call it now. Tuesday night, Tuesday. 8 o'clock. Give us some time, some fam. I'm going to recuperate. Go. Yeah, recuperate. Family travel is Hang fun, on. I'll tell you that. Hang on. Yes. So follow Thank a BHL, awesome. all Thank that you. stuff. Thank you, Chris Zorich. Thank you, Cherie. Thank you, all the fans, the loyal fans. You're building – a group of family of Super 16 poll fans. Every week you guys are here. We love you guys. For Chris Zorch, the three-time All-American, Walter Camp All-American, the Hall of Famer, the oh. College Football Hall of Famer, former second-round draft pick of the Chicago Bears. And, hey, I think this needs to go in that bio. Former All-Madden. No. All Madden defensive like tackle. That. Let's just take like a marker and scratch out one of them and then put it Yes, in and like I do like a that. line. Yes. And oh, yeah, there's a line and an X and a line. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> exactly. That, that would be a great honor for him. <laughs> for Chris Zorich, I'm your guy, Draft Dr. Phil. We'll see you next week here on the Super 16 Poll Show. Thanks for watching the Super 16 Poll Show with Chris Zorich. Like, subscribe, and comment. This has been a special presentation of the Tape Never Lies Network. Performance.